Hello everyone. So today I'm back with another interview question and the interview question which we got today is what are generator functions in JavaScript? Now typically this question is not asked for entry level job positions but if you are applying after let's just say a couple of years of experience for senior roles or SD2 or like senior level roles uh, of similar kind uh, there might be chances that questions like generator functions then function currying might be asked because at that level you are expected to know a lot of core JavaScript fundamental concepts and concepts like this, which I don't know if we use it much in our day to day JavaScript programming, but typically you are expected to know about such technical concepts. Now coming to generator functions, uh, in today's session, we are going to cover two concepts about it. In the first part, we'll cover what are generator functions in JavaScript. And in the second half, we will cover the coding of generator functions and the use cases of generator functions. This is going to be a short video. So let's start off with the actual definition of what generator functions are. Now, a generator function is basically a function which produces a sequences of results instead of a single value. Typically, when you write a function in JavaScript, it is typically returning a single value. Like if you write return some string, some integer, or even array of values, you are returning a single data type. In this case, what happens is the value that you return, for example, for a common JavaScript function, that value remains same. Generally, if you are returning, let's just say some name, that value of that name isn't going to change. In case of generator function, the thing that happens is with every call that you make to a generator function, the value returned changes. Like the return value in each subsequent call keeps on changing. Now, let's just see how this happens with a practical example. So I'm going to refer the MDN docs, which are like the best possible documentation on this concept. So the syntax for generator functions is typically like this. You write function followed by a star, which specifies that this is a generator function. Then you write the function name and you might or might not pass a value. So in this case, they are passing a value, let's just say I. Now the value that you want to return from a generator function is returned using a yield keyword instead of a return keyword which we generally use in case of normal javascript functions so that's the two main differences between a generator function and regular function first is you write a generator function with a star after the function keyword second thing is when you want to return something from a generator function you write yield so let's just say there is a yield keyword return and we are returning the value passed to the function in the first part for example if it, the value is let's just say 10 the value 10 will be written now we have written yield second time. And in this case, we are returning I plus 10. For example, 10 plus 10 will be 20. So when we make an instance of this function, for example, we store the instance of this function generator in a variable called a gen. And we are passing a value 10, which will be passed to this value I, and this will be stored at this yield 10. Now, when you want to generate an output from a generator function, again, the syntax changes. So there are typically three syntax changes happening. So whenever you want to get some value from a generator function, you write the function instance, for example, in this case, gen dot next, which is the function internal function calls of gen, and then the value that it needs to be returned from the yield keyword. So in this case, the output returned is 10 because we are calling the function for the first time. The interesting thing that happens is when you call the function again using dot next dot value, the value returned this time is 20 instead of 10. And the reason for this is when you call the function for the first time, it returns the value from the first yield. When you call the function the next time, it will return the value from the second instance of yield, which is yield i plus 10. So in this case, the output is 20. So if you run this function, the first time the output is 10, second time the output is 20. Let's try to understand this in a with a bit more simplistic example. So let's just say I have a function which is Again, since we are generating, writing a generator function, we will write star and get names, let's just say. And in this case, if I write something like yield, I hope the spelling of yield is correct. Let me just check. Okay, why I, I don't know why, but I always like mix the E and I in a lot of keywords. Anyways, so it is Y I LD. And let's just say we return John. And in the second time, we return another name. Let's just say Jim. And 
we create an instance of this function which is const get name or gen name let's just say is equal to and get names which is the function instance so for so on and so forth the concepts i think conceptually it should be okay with you all like we have made the first change which is star and we are using yield instead of return now the first time that we call this function using console.log so i'm going to go with gen name let's just see what gen name consists first of all before we go with the next dot value or something like that so let's just log out gen name and let's just see what we get so i'm just going to open my console and in case of gen name we get an object which is called a generator and if you want to like explore this in much more detail let's just go into the main console so in this case we have the function which is a generator function and there might be some internals of it we are not concerned with that with that right now but if you go into the prototype of generator we have the next function which we are going to use in, uh, in some time and we have other things like constructor and stuff which we are not interested in the one thing which we are interested in is the next function so what we are going to do is we are now going to call the next function from this generator function prototype now if you are not aware of prototype please go and search about it before you move ahead because prototypes are the basic things by which all of these things become a little bit more clear conceptual i know using syntax you can write dot next dot value and you will get done but don't do that try to understand uh, this kind of concepts using the internal implementations that way you will be able to explain it in a much more better fashion when you are explaining it to an interviewer so let's just see what happens when we call the next within the generator function prototype now we get an object okay now within this object we have two instances one is done which is false and we have the value so for some time let's just ignore done and let's just get this value john so we go with dot val okay then we go with console.log again and we go gen name second time and we again go gen name dot next we are already aware of what gen name gen name contact contains so let's just see what gen name dot next consists of so we again go with the console section the shortcut for uh, console is command option i in mac so in this case if you observe the value that is written is jim and again we have done which is false so if we print out the value now we will get we should get actually john for the first time and jim the second time okay uh, let me just switch to the js view i think since i'm opening the browser console the code view is not remaining there so what i can do is yeah this will be better so the first time we called the get name function we have the value john the second time we call the function we get the value jim and that's the beauty of generator functions that is uh, that every time you call these functions we get a series of values depending of depending on how you use the yield keyword so that is the whole gist of it that is it is used to generate a series of values instead of a single value now a good use case which i can think of for using this function is to generate an auto incrementer in javascript so let's just say i want to create an auto incrementing function which is like let's just say the function whose value starts from zero and eventually when you call that function every time the function returns a value which is incremented by one so generally i would have gone for closures for this but let us see how to do it using generator functions as well so we go with function star and we go with uh, auto incrementer let's just say and i'm just going to comment out the original part now let's just say i have a variable this time we have a variable so we just go with let counter is equal to 0 for the first time let's just say i am going to yield counter plus plus let's just save this box so we go with control dot log if it doesn't we will obviously make some changes so we go with auto incrementer and we call the auto incrementer not like this obviously we go with const counter is equal to the auto incrementer function and Okay, let's just print out counter again. 
just so that our conceptually things are clear. Okay, I made the same mistake of spelling. Anyways, okay. So we have the auto incrementer and in the auto incrementer, we have the prototype of generator in which we have the next function. So we can call that. So let's just call the counter dot next. Now I'm not sure how this will look like on mobile phones. So let me just zoom in a bit. And we'll go with counter dot next dot away. And let's just see what we get. So in the first case, we have the value which is zero, great. I'm not sure if we will get the value one the second time, but we can see what happens. So we hit save and we get undefined. Now, why do we get undefined? Let me just print out the next value now and see what happens. So in this case, if you observe, we have this done mark, which is now set to true. In, if you remember from the previous like code, uh, you would have observed that a done flag was false and we are getting a value. Now let's just say, instead of doing this, I yield or write yield keyword again, and I go with counter plus plus. Okay, or let's just go with a pre-increment operator or counter plus one. Okay. And now let's just see what the output is. So we clear the console. So the first time that we print out the value, we get the value, which is, uh, okay, let's just print out the next function. And we save. So let's just see what happens now. Um, I think I should clear and save it again. And I don't know, let's just go with the counter dot next flag again for the third time. And let's just see what the output is in the console.log. Okay, so whenever we like call the counter dot next, let's just say three times and we have the yield keyword returned twice. The thing that happens is the first time the yield returns the counter value, which is let's just say zero. Then on the next call, it returns the incremented value, which is one. And on the third call, since there is no third yield keyword, the thing that happens is the value return is undefined and a done flag is set to true. What this means is the execution or the values which were supposed to be returned from the generator functions are completed because there is no presence of yield keyword again. So this, this is where the done flag is for because let's just say whenever there is a yield keyword successively, like if there is a yield keyword after the current uh, function call, the done flag will be false. As soon as the count of the yield keywords, for example, in this case, if there are two yield keywords and there are two functions calls completed, in the next function called uh, function execution will be terminated. That is the done flag will be true and we will know that the execution of this function is completed. So that is why done flag is used. Like it signifies whether the execution or the cycle which is running internally in the generator is complete or not. And it depends on how many number of times we have the yield keyword. Now in our case, since we want an auto incrementer, that is we want the value to be incremented by one indefinitely. What we can do is we can set a loop and the easiest way to set a infinite kind of a loop is just set while true and return yield counter plus one. So now if we save this and if we see what happens next, we see that, okay. now it should hopefully yeah so in this case as you can see we have the counter values incremented from zero to one to two so this is how you can create an auto incrementer or auto incrementer decrementer as well for example if i go with counter minus minus with a value zero the thing that will happen is we will go into negative terms like zero minus one minus two if you set this value to a positive value obviously you will get a proper decrementing stuff like 10, 9, 8. I hope the context is clear. Like you can create an auto incrementer using yield functions or you can also 
like have some other use cases now uh, i am not able to think of much right now if you know about any use cases of yield function or generator function basically please feel free to share them in the comment so that's it from my end for today i hope you are clear with what generator functions are and how to use them and how to write them in javascript see you all in the next video goodbye